So if you've been considering uh, any of the different IKEA options beyond the Calyx, because I'm sure if you're browsing their website or even walking through their stores, you see these other shelves, but everybody talks about the Calyx. And you wanted to know, why aren't people using the other shelves that IKEA sells? They're useful. You know, mm -hmm. they're useful for, you know, if you've got the space for it or it fits your design, they're perfectly good shelves. So we're back in what seems like forever. We'll get to that later. So today we're going to be talking about our board game collection. As you may or may not know, we have lots and lots of board games and storage options is something that comes up a lot. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, a lot of people use the Calyx and we do too. Well, technically, technically we don't. We do use a lot of IKEA products. This is not the Calyx. It may look like the Calyx. It's not the Calyx. It's the precursor to the Calyx because we've been at this for a while. This is the Expedit or the Expedite. I don't know. It doesn't have an E on the end. Expedit? Expedit? Uh, Expedit. So there's not a whole lot of difference between the Expedit and the Calyx. So we're just going to refer to this as the Calyx since you can't buy the Expedit. Expedit. Uh, this is hard. <laughs> the it was just continued. We're going to go with Calyx. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to call it the Calyx from here on out. It has a thicker edge than the calyx, so the exterior dimensions are just a little bit different, but all of the interior dimensions where your games actually go are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. What I feel like is kind of a unique situation in that we, well, I guess it's probably not that unique. We're addicted to board games, we're addicted to Ikea. So we have a <laughs> lot of both, okay? But we have a number of different Ikea shelves, including the calyx type. We have the Billy. Mm -hmm. um, the Billy bookcase, which yeah. is the bookcase the book if you've ever gone to world. Ikea. Yeah. yeah, like everybody has a Billy bookcase or has at least seen a book, Billy bookcase. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know you've seen a Billy bookcase, you've seen you one. We have the Iket, the Iket system, which is a... They're like cubes. Right. Yeah, they're they're more art. They're not artsy. Uh, decorative. They're, they're more, more decorative. More decorative. Yeah. Like I, IKEA shelves are very functional. They look nice, but they're very functional. Where the Iket ones are, they're more intended to look nice rather than store a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, the the cubes themselves are slightly smaller, but they come in a greater variety of colors, and it's very much more modular than these big old sets. So it's the individual cubes, and you can mount them or stack them or whatnot so you've got a lot more options now we'll get to the ikat later in the video but uh, one thing that the ikat advertises is the toolless assembly that i didn't believe it at first but you really can put the entire thing together without any tools whatsoever mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty nice it, it's weird yeah. the the great things about the calyx again it, it's kind of like we're preaching to the choir here because uh, a lot of board game collectors already have the calyx but it's a uh, approximately 13 uh, by 13 square so if your game is less than 13 inches wide it's it perfect. stores it just fine but there's a number of options of the way that you can store the games so one of the things that I like to do here is if I have a lot of games in the same series then I can put one that has a really nice cover on display most of you may recognize this from the Raiders of the North Sea series of games or the Shem Phillips games um, so behind it I actually have a lot of the other games, mm -hmm. so uh, it's utilizing a lot more storage uh, than you normally would on a lot of games. Because if you look here, so for example, these games, everybody knows that these are probably smaller games. There's a whole lot of dead space behind there. Um, there's a lot of dead space behind there and behind there. So, I mean, there's, I could put more games there, but then you'd have to... Yeah. Unload. Then you would never find them. Right. They're not easily accessible. Right. We do have the great thing about this, uh, the Calyx system, is it's got lots of inserts as well. So I actually don't know if this is still available. This one may still be available. This is the wine rack for the Calyx. This one's not available anymore. Yeah. yeah, but as you can see, we have options for different size games. So this is great for tiny little games. That way you're not pulling out a whole stack. This is good for slightly larger games. It's just basically it bisects it. And then there are drawers and cabinet doors so that you can hide unseemly things. Back on these here, like for example here, you can see I've got two games right here, but there's still that 13 inches of depth and these are not 13 inch. Uh, 
if you have a ridiculous amount of deck boxes, then, then, then this works. Stack it as deep as you want in deck boxes. Which, as long as you don't mind pulling them all out, or if they're labeled appropriately, it works. But mm -hmm. you're really just using the front face of them. Uh, but that's that's the Calyx. But the question is, at, is there something better? I mean, are the other options from Ikea? Because yeah. I think one of the great benefits of the Calyx is the square form factor of it. You know, it's just many, many, many board games are in a square mm -hmm. box. You know? Right, and it's great for display like this. Mm -hmm. You know, that looks really pretty. It looks really nice. But it doesn't fit Gloomhaven. This shelf is completely pushed up against the wall. Now, if it wasn't, if there's, it's approximately a molding's width mm -hmm. of overhang here. So if, if this is against a wall where you have floor molding. Yeah, it'd be um, pretty perfect. It'd be, it'd be perfect. It would overhang the back, but I mean, who cares? Let's go look at the next shelf. So this is the Billy. Hey, Billy. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it sounded like. That's silly. But what we use the Billy for is small game storage. And it excels at this. This is the standard height Billy. And there's over 100 games on this shelf. Does it come with this many shelves? No, uh, it doesn't. So I purchase, you can purchase the shelves separately. And I have purchased two additional shelves uh, because I very specifically use this for small game storage. And because, you know, when it comes to small games, even the ones that are taller, mm -hmm. you can just lay them down mm -hmm. and, and they, they fit. But a, a billy shelf is, is deep enough that you can get away with turning a lot of games sideways. And you can get a lot of storage out of these billy shelves. We're obviously big fans of the Tiny Epic games. Speaking of Tiny Epic games, their, their game boxes, other than being tiny, are outstanding. Because they give you the option of storing it the way you want. So on this side, you can read it and you don't have to turn sideways like a book. On the other side, if you're going to lay it flat, you can read it. Okay, that so is clever. De depending on how you want to store it, yeah, I mean it's completely up to you. So, uh, unlike the Exit series, um, now I do have to say that there is a Maps expansion for Tiny Epic Tactics. They didn't do that. Fail. But anyway, the Billy is outstanding for small game storage. Anything from you know these tiny games, Splendor Fits. Tiny game storage is one of our, our worst banes. Well, because as you saw over on the Calyx, I mean, you can either stack them up high, which makes them inaccessible, mm. or you waste a lot of shelf space. Now, the genius thing about the Billy is that you can buy additional shelves, which you can't do with most shelving units. Right. right? You can't buy right. them separately. You have to buy a whole other unit or email the company or, you know, whatever. You have to go through some extraordinary measures to get them. Whereas Ikea is just smart and they sell you the shelves alone. Now when it comes to the billies, uh, one of the things when you're shopping for a billy online, it'll often show off those little skinny shelves. Mm -hmm. Those aren't actually billy shelves, those are Nedbys. Gnedbys? I mean it's G-N-E-B-D-Y or something. Nedby, Nedby shelves, uh, which we have over here as well. And those those are super shallow. Yeah, so they're really good for, you know, really, again, small box games. I think they're intended for, like, DVDs or CDs or something, but they are really good for sort of short, small games. Yeah, and that that is the depth of them. You can fit DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, video games, and CDs on them. And, and, and uh, But I find, I find it useful for single deck games, but to fill an entire shelf of them... That's a lot of single deck games, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't have that many. But then the nice thing about them also, though, is that they're very thin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they can fit in very small spaces. So if you have, you know, you've got a big Billy bookcase or you've got a Calyx, um, and you just have a little bit of overhang, mm -hmm. you know, on your wall, you need a, a thin shelf to go there that's perfect. Right, yeah. It's just to fill the gaps, you know, if you're going to... If you set up a corner unit like we have in some of the rooms and it's the only shelf in that series it comes in various colors that usually match the billies, the billies. yeah yeah so. i actually thought they were billies but yeah. you're right they're they're not they're not but they do typically pop up if you're shopping billies yeah um they are unstable they're completely unstable so they have to be mounted to the wall again just because they're tall and skinny so they don't have much of a base you should be mounting all of your shelves to the wall period <laughs> 
it's an option. It's an IKEA option, and it's pretty good for um, small game storage if you don't want to go, you know, full on Billy. Now, like I said, there's over a hundred games on this Billy shelf, the one single Billy shelf without the the height extension or anything. It has two extra shelves. Go ahead and go ahead and guess. Guess how many games are on here. Whoever gets it exactly right, you can get a. We'll, we'll give you one of those hundred dollar gift certificates to Cabbages and Kings. No, that's unfair. I feel like we have to show the whole thing. So go ahead and, and guess or count. You know, first person to guess it right, gift certificate. Yay, free stuff. <laughs> one of the one of the problems of uh, small games is where is it? Oh, there it is. See, I couldn't even find it because there was no title on it. Is the Unstable Unicorn series? The sides of their boxes are blank. Absolutely blank. Now this isn't Unstable Unicorns, but you wouldn't know that because there's no title on the side. This is Runes and Regulations, okay? But the sides of their boxes are blank. I mean, I could store it here, but now it doesn't fit on that shelf that I specifically designed for that height. I want to store it this way, but I'm going to be the only one that knows it's on my shelf. Now that may be, okay, so what's the big deal, the personal preference thing? But if I have friends coming over and they want to look through my games and say, oh, Tiny Epic Tactics, what is that? Because they could read the title. They will never ask me ever about runes and regulations and probably will never ask me about unstable unicorns because they can't read it on my shelf. Unless they say, hey, what's that game with no title? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of our billies are upstairs. So we're, so we're up in our kids' room mm -hmm. now. Again, you know, we, we have over 800 games, a good portion of them our kids games because we play a lot of board games with our kids so rather than clutter up our storage <laughs> their games go in their rooms which is you know i mean part of that is just so they can grab their own games mm -hmm. and whenever play they want, want to play and play with them but no i mean we do have very strict rules that the board games need to be put away especially before getting another board game out yeah, yeah. well that primarily just cuts down on lost pieces right. and mess and whatnot yeah. and they're they're really good about it yeah, I mean, there's a number of games that I had in my childhood that we only had a, a portion of the pieces. So you, we played modified games. It's like, oh, you can only go this far in the game, and and there it is. The Billy bookcases, they they worked out really well. You know, they have these these shorter ones, which are great for turning corners, and that's what we are. We're in a corner of their room, and um, Haba games are great on Billy shelves, but most other games are not. Blue Orange do okay. Well, we're big fans of Blue Orange games, and those come right all the way up to the edge of that shelf. If you know anything about the Billy bookcases, that backing, you know, is just nailed into place, and it's very easy to push that backing out, especially if you're an enthusiastic child when you're trying to put it back on the shelf or trying to clean up your room very quickly. So Blue Orange exactly fits, or at least their kids' games exactly fit onto the shelf. Another thing that our kids have are this, the standard games like Monopoly, uh, Clue. The themed. licensed. Well, yeah. yeah, they have the, a lot of licensed games. Like they have Yo-Kai Watch Game of Life. They have Harry Potter Clue, My mm. Little Pony Monopoly. And those mostly fit on the Billy shelves, but again, they overhang. They mm -hmm. overhang on the edge. You do have to have the wider Billy. So we have a wide sort of bookcase Billy behind me. And then we have the shorter mm -hmm. ones over here just to fill in the corner. Which again, you know, the variety uh, of options that you have is great to fit into a specific space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, you know, we use our Billy downstairs for small game storage. And there's a lot of small games when it comes to kids games. And so it, it's great for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the drawback, so our kids are six and nine. So they're not quite tall enough to get to the top ones, especially our six-year-old. Our nine-year-old's getting close, so I mean, it's, right. it's well, not a problem for very long. Right, and so we put the games that they pl play more frequently at the bottom, and the ones they play less frequently or only play with us at the top, which, you know, may or may not work for your storage options. But for us, it works okay. And, and we just have the, the, the plain white ones in here with the, the intention of letting them paint them or draw on them or do whatever, you know, because they're kids. Mm -hmm. so. But again, a lot of kids' games are big boxes, you know, because kids like big things. And to get it sold in stores, you know, you want your box to be bigger and more mm -hmm. colorful. Um, so you end up with a lot of big box games with not a lot of substance in them. You know, yeah, just a lot kids of empty games, space. You know. So there's a lot of overhang, but it's kids' room. So yeah, that's so it, okay. it works for that because nobody nobody's going into your kids' room and looking at the decor 
And if they are, if you're decorating that way, then maybe it's not really your kid's room. It's, a, <laughs> it's an extension of, of your of, space. Of yourself. You yeah. Know? So, um, but yeah, it works out. For the most part, it works out. So the Billy shelves are good for that. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of Billy shelves, but they're mostly for our kids. So this is the Iket system. And, and to me, it's, it's the fancier Ikea. Uh, well, I guess fancy. It doesn't need to be in quotes. It, it is the fancier Ikea option as far as shelving goes. Mm -hmm. right? Definitely more decorative. Mm -hmm. um, it's very similar. You, you'll notice that it's boxes, so it's very similar to the Calyx system. The, the big difference between the Calyx and the, the Iket is it has a solid back, whereas the Calyx doesn't have anything. Oh. So if you have the longer games and your shelf isn't necessarily sitting against the wall because of molding or, or floor molding or anything like that, you have the ability to push a longer game past the back of it. You don't have that with the Iket. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it still works for a good number of games. Uh, we've got our Spirit Islands, our Pandemics here. If you're a... Stonemeyer Games fan, you know, most of those boxes are the same size. Uh, this is about the size of a wingspan box, so it fits very well in here. The nice thing about this is that it does come in different colors, so that it, it can fit more easily with your decor or be a splash of color against your board games. This also comes with doors, which again is useful for hiding unsightly things. Right. It does have a longer version, so it would be two boxes, that comes with drawers, which again is useful for card sleeves or other components, you know, your dice or whatnot. So yeah, that's and, very and handy. And they're, the, they're the, uh, the fancy doors and drawers, you know, they're spring-loaded, they don't have handles on them. If you're a fan of, like, um, Unstable Unicorns or their series of games, the drawers are about the size of their play mats. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I know that's very specific, you know, and probably not a good reason to get this shelf, but it fits it very well. Right, so. and that is a nice thing about the long drawers is you can roll up game mats and put them in there. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a good place to put them, you know, like a fine, fancy like wine rack or something that you use for that, then that's a good option to sort of hide them away because it is long and game mats tend to be long. Yeah, so this is one of the few long drawer options um, from Ikea until you move into their dressers or their media centers. Mm -hmm. and then those start to become very expensive, very heavy pieces of furniture too. Not that this is cheap. This is, this is a very expensive option as far as shelving. The dollar to amount of storage ratio that you get here, it's not good. That being said, we don't actually use this for board games. Um, right, this is in my craft room. Yeah. So there's not, this is typically filled with you know, sewing books and notions and yarn and things like that. But the, the shelves just happened to be empty, something we'll explain later. So I was able to put some board games on here just as an example. Not what I would choose for board game storage. Right. For very select games, I would. You know. Well, the nice thing is, too, because they're individual cubes, I mean, these could be mounted on the wall. So if you had, mm -hmm. you know, a few games that you wanted to display and just sort of put them selectively in your living room above, like, a media console or something like that, you could just mount one cube and right. use that as a display and piece. And just have, you know, all of your pandemic games or all of your yeah. wingspan games. So yeah. it, it it's a versatile option for something like that if you're really mm -hmm. trying to showcase. I mean, here we have them all stacked and connected. We made a wall of cubes, which, like he said, is probably not the best option. A, cal a calyx would have been better for this, mm -hmm. but I wanted the pretty colors, and so I got pretty colors. It does have the, the option for a wider shelf, uh, but even though the wider shelf is bisected. Uh, right, so it ends up being cubes anyway. Yeah, so. But that's the cut. It is an option. It isn't the greatest option, but for a very small number of games to be showcased. It's not large. It's not large collection storage. It's small collection storage or specific collection storage. You could fit all of the tiny epic games in a single cube. Mm -hmm. So now, what I don't know is this the same size as the Calyx? So, like our inserts, they don't fit in here, do they? Calyx inserts will not fit in here. Yeah, this is a little smaller. Yeah. yeah. So it's not. You can't go back and forth like that. Right, which is weird because they have all of those box, those drawers. Mm, those cubby things? Yeah, that are meant to slide out of a calyx. You can't use them here. I don't know it's if they have choice. ones that fit here because we didn't yeah. look for them because we wanted open storage. Mm -hmm. But they probably do. They probably just make you buy different baskets. Gloomhaven will not fit in anything with the Eket name. It just it doesn't fit, period. 
So with all the options that IKEA has, uh, the question is which one have we chosen to store the majority of our games? Uh, but you know, that if you've watched our channel for uh, for any period of time, uh, you've probably noticed that we have these these big custom shelves behind us, and that's still really our choice mm -hmm. because you know the board games come in so many different sizes, and there's quite a few good, really good games that are massive boxes, mm -hmm. absolutely massive boxes. Now the option is putting those massive boxes on the top of a calyx. Which seems like a terrible idea because they're giant and heavy and I'm short. Yeah, well, it's also limited. You're limited to the number of giant boxes that you can store mm -hmm. by the number of calyxes that you have or even the top of a billy or top of any of those shelves. And if those things aren't secured to the wall, secure them to the wall because you really should. Even if you don't have something sitting on top of those shelves, you need to secure those things to the wall. Especially um, if you have kids or pets. But yeah, so we, we use custom shelves. They're just, they're just big, long pieces of timber. And I'm able to fit the majority of our collection on these shelves. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're lucky enough that this is taking up one wall in our basement. So mm -hmm. it's one big long wall uh, because we have a lot of games. Yeah, but it's not 800 games on this wall. Mm -hmm. uh, when I built the shelves, um, I wasn't able to fill it up with the number of games that we had because I built the shelves back when we had maybe three, 400 games, 300 games, I think. So we've, since these shelves have been built, we've gotten a lot four or 500 more games. Our collection has doubled, mm -hmm. at least. So we ran out of room here, so we, you know, I needed a place to put small game storage. This didn't have small game storage, so the Billy came in. We already had the Expedite shelves, or the Expedite shelves, which are the Calyx shelves. And so I started repurposing those shelves like everybody else did. You mm -hmm. know, they became, they didn't start out as our board game storage, but eventually... I pulled them from the the purpose that they they had. They were in our office downtown, and then when we shut down that office downtown, we had all these extra shelves. And like, hey, I can I can put board games on these, mm -hmm. which kind of saved our collection again. But now all of our calyxes are filled, um, all of our billies are filled, mm -hmm. all of our kids' billies are filled. Oh yeah, we had to buy billies for the kids. Yeah, because yeah. now that they're older, they have a lot more games also. And this whole wall is filled, so now we're out of options. So we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> I told them to stop buying games. It's he said, true. let's buy a new house. <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving. Um, now, it's, it's, not, it's not because we have too many board games. Uh, there are other reasons why we're moving. However, having over 800 board games really changes the way you look at houses. Yeah. I mean, which is something that we're hoping to share with you in, in the upcoming weeks of uh, how, do you, how do you find a new house? when you have ridiculous collections of things. And we're moving again, so here we go. <laughs> Wish us luck.